And how can you enjoy on the last Wednesday? Amen. Uh, we just thank God for that. And we hope that it is truly blessing you. I would think that after almost 26 years of marriage, we would be qualified to teach on marriage. Uh, I was sharing with someone today, our real estate agent, Claudia, that came Sunday. And she was just saying, she said, maybe I need to come even though I'm not married. I said, well, come on. I said, you don't have to be married. She said, you never know. God, you know, future God may bless. I said, that's right. And you get to her, she said, I just, you know, you know, she said, I just really love how you and your husband, you know, show that exemplariness of God. And she said, you know, I really said, if, I, if I'm able to make it, I'm going to try to come out tonight. And I was sharing with her, I said, you know, um, we're living in a damn time where people, just like people are divorcing in their marriages, the marriage exemplifies what how your life is with God. Right. And if your marriage is not right, then nine times out of ten, your relationship is not right with God. And if people that are divorcing the world, that that twenty percent in the church that's divorcing, and that fifty percent of the world that's divorcing, that's the same. That that's how they divorce God. And so I said, because your marriage is a symbolic of God in the church. And so just like people are out there divorcing and married and giving in marriage, it's the same way they feel they can do with God. And so we are going to be talking tonight on um, a title. We entitled the last one. We know that our theme is of going, going your marriage God's way, but we're going to have certain topics and we will probably be on this topic, uh, creating an un unbreakable bond uh, for a little minute. Um, and uh, I want to read a scripture, um, and then out of Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. And what we're going to do tonight, I'm going to teach a little on mine and see, we'll see how and then um, my husband will teach on his, and we will go from there. Um, we try to get through our lesson and um, uh, creating an unbreakable bond. Please ask chapter 4, verse 9. If you have to just say amen. It says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone, all one. When he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together when they have heat, but how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. And if we would turn to Ephesians 4 and 3. So we know that a threefold cord is not easily broken. Amen. We cannot do it by ourselves. Ephesians 4 and 3, it says, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And we are talking tonight about creating an unbreakable bond. The NLT, the New uh, Living Translation version, says it like this out of Ephesians 4 and 3, and I like the way they said it. It said, make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. And when I think, when, when I read that, I, it, it said, binding yourselves together with peace. So what binds us together? Peace. Amen. So I want us to, to us get an understanding of the word bond here. We are talking tonight about the, un, the creating an unbreakable bond. The word bond comes from a Greek word in the New Testament meaning sundesimos, meaning that which binds together. A band or bond, and the two and the two root words in which it was derived from, soon meaning beside or accompany, and desmos meaning bond, string, or chain. So bond is means something that is holding you together, right. something that is accompanying you, something that is a, a, a chain to you, something that is. Uh, a string that is tying you together. Amen. And we know that in the book of Ecclesiastes, it says a three, four cord cannot be easily broken. And so bond means something that is connecting you 
together. In order, what we have to understand, in order for married couples to build a bond that is unbreakable, they must first ask themselves a question. Do I have a marriage that is based on a contract or a covenant? And so we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for your word tonight. We ask that as we go forth to teach your people, Lord, to teach couples, oh God, on how to create an unbreakable bond in their marriage, God, that would exemplify you to the world. Father, we thank you right now. We ask that your word would come forth with clarity, understanding. God, use us as your vessels and your oracles to speak forth your word, God. Touch our mind and our heart, God, that we may deliver what you have for your people on today, God. And we thank you and we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. Yes. And so, amen. And so we see that we have to ask our, ourselves, do I have a marriage based on a contract? Just because we got married, we know we went into a contract or, do, or and just because I went sign my name on that contract, is my marriage just based off that, or is it really based off a covenant? Now, the word covenant, we're going to get into that. But what we must first establish as married couples, and even to those that may be viewing this by way of YouTube or Ustream, what we must first establish in any marriage is the difference between a legal marriage and a biblical marriage. We are married legally, but are we really married biblically? Okay? We have to distinguish the difference between the two. Then we must know the difference between a marriage that's based on just a contract with two names and a covenant that was paid for by blood. And so when we get those two things established, I think we would have a better clarity of what marriage really is and why God instituted this covenant in the very beginning before he instituted anything else. He instituted a marriage. And a marriage is symbolic and is so important. It's so important that it will cause you not to be saved. That's how important it is. We can be lost if we're not doing what's right in our marriages. Okay, I don't care how much we talk in tongues and how much we run the aisles and how much we shout, but if we are not doing what is right in our marriages, we can miss out on God. Amen. Okay, Malachi, I want to read a, a scripture from Malachi that I found very interesting dealing with marriage. Malachi 2 and 13 said, And this have ye done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears with weeping and with crying out, insomuch that he regarded not, who is he, God, not the offering anymore, or receiveth it with goodwill at your hand. Yet ye say, wherefore? They're asking God, God, why are you not taking our offering anymore? Why are you not hearing our prayer? Why are you not regarding what we're giving to you in the house of the Lord? And he said, because the Lord hath been witness." Between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. God said, I will no longer have any dealings with you because of how they were treating their wives. How you were treating the covenant that God, we didn't institute this, God instituted marriage. So when we began to break and began to mess around with that, we are messing around not with ourselves but with God. And God said, I will not regard you. I will not receive you. I will not take anything at your hand if your covenant is not set right with me. And you're saying, oh, my God, you know, God, I'm, I'm, I'm married, but I, I, I'm my own person. You know, I'm in the marriage, yeah, but I'm a, but I pray and even I, I can pray and I can get it right. And you know, and my if my wife don't get it right, that is true. You can get you can get it right, but you still can't get it right with God until both of y'all got it right with each other. Okay, that that is, that is true. But when there is a breach in the covenant, God has a problem with that. Okay, so most people they like contracts because they have loopholes 
and bail out options that they can take. See, in, when, when you have a marriage that is based on a contract only, that is a way to say, well, I, you know, I, I signed my name, and just as quick as I signed my name is as quick as I can take it back. Right. See, with a contract, you can find a loophole, you can find a way to get out of it. There are options to get out of the contract. But when it comes to marriage, we cannot live by contract. But we must live by love, a love covenant. Most marriages today focus on the personal rights and needs. Most marriages focus on the individual, not the team, but the individual. Me, myself, and I. And my personal needs and my personal life. That's what most marriages today base on, are based on. They're based on me, myself, and I. What am I getting out of the marriage? What are my needs that are not being met out of the marriage? What are my rights that I have in the marriage? Most, most couples that go into a marriage do not go into a marriage understanding the concept of a covenant. Okay? People who view marriage as a contract and not a covenant often make these type of statements. I deserve to be happy. I'm entitled to have my needs met. If this relationship seeks to give me what I want, or if it gets tough or real, boring, you know how we get, we think because oh, I'm not happy anymore, I feel like I'm just unsatisfied, I'm, I'm, I'm just not pleased, you know, he, he is not meeting my needs, she not meeting my needs, and, you know, and, and they feel like, well, if it, if it gets to that point, I have a right to break the contract. Okay, that's a contract marriage. Okay, when we think with this mindset, uh, 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 I have the choice to walk away. Okay, truthfully, you don't have a choice to walk away. Because really, you're in the covenant. Okay, and when you walk away, you're not breaking only breaking the covenant with your spouse, but you're breaking the covenant with God. Okay. And, then, and not only that, but they say, after all, marriage is a contract, and contracts are made to be broken. That's the mentality of most people today. Oh, well, you know, just as quick as I got married, as quick as I can get a divorce. If I don't like how I was going on, I'm going right to the courthouse. I'm going to break that contract. I found a loophole. We're uncompatible. I found a, I found a way to bail out. Irreconcilable differences. Okay? A contract marriage, they always talk about divorce. Okay? I'm going to divorce you. No, you, I'm going to divorce you, you know. It's always about divorce. Breaking the covenant. We're talking tonight about creating an unbreakable bond. Okay? Most marriages today feel that commitment is based on convenience. Is it convenient for me in order for me to be committed? Is my commitment based on my convenience? How is it, how does it, how is it benefiting me? Is it making my way better? You know, my, what I'm satisfied with, my, is it, is it convenient for what I'm doing in my life today? That's what my most com marriage commitments are based on. And that's why you see such a, a great uh, uh, percentage of divorce in the world. And it's still a, a, not a high number as in the world, but we said last week, there's still a high number of 20% even in the church. Okay? Which is still too high for, a church, for two people that not only are uh, in covenant with each other, but in covenant with God. Okay? And so we see that it's based on convenience. Marriage is, uh, marriage is also viewed as a terminal contract. I promise to love, honor, and quit whenever I want to. That is how we, that is how we people in the world and even some people in the church think to me. You know, I promise to love, honor, and quit whenever I want to. If I don't feel like it, I'm not going to do it. If I don't feel like going on, I'm not. I don't care if I have kids or not. I don't care, you know, I don't care who it's going to fix. As long as I'm happy. As long as I'm satisfied and being gratified with what I need. 
It doesn't matter about anybody else. And that's why you see so many dysfunctional families, so many children without fathers, so many children without mothers now. Mothers are now running off leaving the families, abandoning the children. Okay, now it's not just fathers, mothers. Then they're opting out of their contract marriage. So it was never a covenant to them, it was always a contract. So they, they they're taking their way out, they're quitting whatever they want to. And so this is what we're seeing in the world today. And instead of us trying to build, how many of you know that anytime God is for something, the devil is against it? Yes. The devil was against it from the beginning. He understood the power of numbers. He understood the power of multiplication. He understood the power of a covenant. He understood the power of bond, of a bond. We, what we read in the book of Ecclesiastes that two are better than one. And that a three-four cord, cord cannot be easily broken. Amen. I don't know if you ever got a rope and got the rope that where you had three those cords tied together, and they let the cords kind of, kind of, I forget what you call it, braid. Uh, braid it up, and you get you you cannot break those cords. Okay, you cannot break it. Is it's ver it is impossible to break that to break that rope. Okay, and the enemy knows what the power of a covenant does. A covenant protects. A covenant puts you in alliance. A covenant uh, gives a uh, allows you to know that God has a pledge with you. Not only does God have a pledge, but your spouse has a pledge and, and an allegiance unto you. A covenant is very powerful. Amen. Uh, a contract is very fickle. Right. Okay. It is easier when you think about it. It's easier in the United States of America to walk away from a marriage than it is for somebody to walk away from a contract to buy a house or car. Yeah. They would prefer to walk away from a marriage than to forfeit the house or forfeit the car right. in the country. Right. Okay? Marriage has been called the least binding of all contracts. That is sad. We live in a world today that disregards marriage. They think, ma <clears throat> forget marriage, we'll shack up. What good is a covenant? A covenant protection. When, you're in a, when you are in a marriage, my husband can look out and watch my back, and I can look out and watch his back. That's right. We're in a covenant together. And then God can look out and watch out both for both our backs. Okay? So when we can't see, then God can see. But if I'm by myself and I broke my covenant, I'm all alone. I'm all one. All by myself. Who do I have to look out for me? Amen. I still have God, but still I'm more vulnerable. Amen. So it's easier to break contracts in marriage than it is to break a contract in the world. Or buying a home or buying a car. And marriage is considered really as nothing now. Isn't that how the devil wants to portray a family, portray a marriage, portray if, if a marriage can be divided, a whole family can be destroyed. Okay? A whole family. Oh, it's about me. I, I, it's about what I want. It's about how I feel. That's a contract. That's not a covenant. God never intended for marriage to be a convenience-based contract, but a character-based covenant. We would be committed to for life. God wanted you to be in a character-based covenant. Okay, a character-based covenant that would say, because of your character, you say, I entered into this covenant, and because I entered into it, because my character is in the right standings with God, because I have character integrity about myself, I'm going to be committed to this covenant for life. God knew we could not build a marriage based upon lust, physical attraction, feelings, or sign my name on the dotted line. None of those things could we base a marriage off of. Okay, lust when you get married, lust cannot be cured by getting married. So if you was lusting before you got married and you got married in lust, marriage is not going to cure your thirst for lust. 
What is going to cure your thirst for lust? This is why so many people are committing infidelity and breaking the bond of marriage and breaking the covenant of marriage. Why? Because they were they were they met in lust. It was conceived in lust. And now they think marriage is going to cure their lust. Marriage cannot is not a cure for lust. Okay? The only thing that can cure lust is having self-control. Okay? God knew that physical beauty was not going to keep a marriage. Because physical beauty was going to fade away. Father time and mother time, guess what they were going to do? Age was going to get it. Beauty. The Bible in the book of Proverbs 31 says, Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feared the Lord, she shall be praised. So it's not about favor. It's not about beauty, about trying to keep our looks. And that's, that's even for a man also that's caught up in, in physical. We want to look nice. But what we have to understand is that I don't care how fine we are young. Age is going to get you. <laughs> Time is going to get you. Okay? It's going to catch up to you. We want to continue to keep ourselves up. But if, we're, if our marriage is based on how we look, or how, well, I don't like how you look anymore. You don't look good to me. Well, they look good to you when you met them. I don't care. They put on 15, 20, 30 pounds. They still should look good to you. Okay, because if it was all, if that is what your marriage was based on, then that contract is getting ready to be broke. Because now you have forfeited your contract because now you put on weight. You have forfeited your contract because now you desire and lusted after somebody else. Okay, God knew a marriage could not be based or the foundation of a marriage could not be based off of these type of things. He knew that feelings, a marriage could not be just based off emotions and feelings because they are driven by, uh, the, the, your feelings are driven by your emotions and they are fickle. You're you happy one day, sad the next, and crying one day, smiling the next, and you bad attitude one day, and gleeful the next, and hey, it's my good attitude. You're fickle. You're driven by your emotions. Uh, uh, and, and, and because if you're married, because you, I married you because you was always happy. And now you're in the contract marriage, and now they're always depressed, unhappy, and sad. Now you done forfeited your contract. Now you're looking for a divorce court. God said, a marriage cannot be based off of these emotions and feelings and, and all these things because that is not the foundation of what is going to keep the covenant. Right. That is a contract. In order to have a long-term marriage, it requires more than a piece of paper. Just because you went to the courthouse, and this is what I want people, even that's going to be viewing by uh, you stream and YouTube to understand just because you went to the courthouse and got a piece of paper and the judge said now you are legally married that does not mean a thing it means something in the in, in the world but in God you can have a piece of paper and still not be in covenant and in the sight of God you're still not in a covenant relationship with God a piece of paper with your name on it cannot put you in covenant with God. It can't. Well, I, I'm married now. We're legally married by the law. Yeah. But are you, are you really married by the covenant that God created in the beginning? Okay. Contract. Covenant. So in order to maintain long term, I was sharing with uh, 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 Sister Claudia and I said, well, um, I said, well, my mom and dad have been married 46, 46 years. And my older sister have been in, 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 in covenant for over 30 some years. And I have another sister that has been in covenant with her husband for over 17 years. And I said, you know, and, it's, and it, it is really sad because, you know, my mom and them at the time <clears throat> were not, you know, they were they not in church. And I said, but yet they are in covenant. And they went through the hard times, and they went through the sad times, and they went through the bad times, but yet they endured. Because it wasn't just based off a contract. 
And I said it's sad because even sometimes people in the world can show and lead the people in the church and show them the way of how to do it. When we don't even understand that we are serving the one true God. But yet, we quit to say, I want to quit. I want to break the country. I want to get a bailout. The unbreakable bond. A contract marriage will always be about legalism and leverage. A con co covenant marriage is about love and loyalty. A contract marriage is for as long as we both shall love. A covenant marriage is for as long as we both shall live. So whether you feel like you're in love today or not, you still got to be in the country. Sure. Not in the country. That's not a bailout option. When I don't love you, but Tina Turner sang that song, what's love got to do with it? Well, unfortunately, love sometimes don't have anything to do with it. It's commitment. It's a covenant. Okay? A contract marriage calls for the signing of names only. A covenant marriage calls for the binding of souls. A contract marriage is writing your name in ink across a piece of paper. A covenant marriage is writing the name of your soulmate across your heart in blood. A covenant is the only adequate foundation on which to build a lasting marriage. Married couples must recover and reaffirm the biblical view of marriage as a sacred and permanent covenant. We must reaffirm and we must recover and understand that marriage is a sacred and permanent covenant. There is no way out. There is no bail out. Right. You are in covenant. And when you break that, you're breaking that with God. And what is there anything too hard for God? What is what what can we possibly say? Well, Lord, I just couldn't get along with him. I just didn't love him anymore. I just didn't feel that I didn't have my mojo. I lost it. I just couldn't stand to look at him. When you're a company, you say, Lord, you know, I don't feel like I love him today. I feel like I love her today, but Lord, I know you can restore. I'm going, I don't know what I'm going through. Whatever it is, God, I know you're there. See, that's that three, four, that's that unbreakable bond. That's that cord. That's that string. That's that chain. That's keeping you together. It ain't about what love got to do with it. It's about as long as we both shall what? Live. You entered into the covenant with your spouse and in the, in, in the fear of God. And when you depart this life, you need to depart it. The only way that you're going to break, get out of the covenant, is through death. It's through death. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little exercise. Okay? And the people out there that's going to be watching this by Ustream, you can take out a piece, piece of paper and a pen. If you ain't got a piece of paper and a pen, take a piece of paper and a pen out. And we are going to take a little quiz. Okay, we are going to take a little quiz, and we're going to go back to the first question about is our marriage based on a contract or is it based on a covenant? And now, what I want us to understand is we can be for real. We are not trying to impress anybody. We are not trying to uh, 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 make it appear that we just have it all together in our marriage, Okay. Because that's not the point. The point of, of marriage, teaching on marriage and having marriage classes and, and, and marriage lessons and things of this, and I'm going to stop here and then I'll let my husband convene with his after we take this quick test. Um, we, when you have your pen and paper, get it out. And we are going to be... Yeah, yeah amen, amen. You don't have to... You, that's right. You don't have to show your spouse... Um, what you're going to be writing down, and when uh, so see Vaughn gets back, somebody can get write, write your question. I'm going to give you a quick. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give you the questions, and and it's two. It's two. Uh, uh, it's two lists. Okay, and I'm going to ask you 
I ask you two questions, and I, what I want you to put, I want you to put contract on one side, and I want you to put covenant on the other side. Now, I want us to be, be truthful. Me and my husband took this quiz, and we were truthful about a lot of things. Okay, you got to be truthful. Okay, well, God, God ain't impressed because God knows what's going on. So you got to be true with yourself. And, and Sister Yvonne, I said we're going to do two things. You need to put on one side of your paper contract and the other side covenant. And I'm going to ask you several questions, and, and I want you to put a check mark under which one. Okay? Now, the first one is, have you ever or do you say you had better do it to your spouse or do you say, how may I serve you? Put a check mark under, do you say you had better do it? Or do you say, how may I serve you? So you, put one and you just put a check mark. Is it, do you, if the you had better do it is under contract. And how may I serve you is under covenant. Now, do we speak to our spouse and say, how may I serve you? Or do we say, you, I know you better do it. Okay. The next one, what do I get? Do you worry about what you're going to get from your spouse in order to get something in return? Or do you say, what can I give? Contract or covenant? Don't lie to yourself. I want everybody to be truthful. Because you don't, you, when you, if you're not truthful, you're just deceiving yourself. If you don't really do it, don't say you do it. Be truthful. Do you say, what do I get? Or what can I give? What do I get is under contract. What can I give is under covenant. Okay, the next one is, what will it take? Do you ask your spouse when you're upset or going through something, well, what is it going to take? What will it take for you to do this? For you to do that? For you to stop this? For you to stop that? Or do you say, whatever it takes, I'm willing to Which one do you say? Contract says, what will it take? And covenant says, whatever it takes, I'm willing. Put a, put a check mark. The next one is, do you say, it's, that's not my responsibility. That was your responsibility. Or do you say, I'm happy to do it? When something goes wrong, the next one is, do you say, it's not my fault? It's your fault. You should have did that. You weren't looking out for that. You messed that up. Or do you say, I accept responsibility? Contract or covenant? Okay, our next one is, do you, or do you say, on the contract, I'll meet you halfway. No, I'm not going to do that. I'll meet you halfway. If you do something, I'll do something too. I'll meet you halfway on that agreement. Or do you say, you know what? I'll give 100%. Do you say, I'll give 100% of the covenant? Or do you say, I'll meet you halfway on the contract? The next one is, do you say, I'll be faithful for now? You may not say it out loud, but you'll be saying it in your mind. Or do you say, I'll be faithful forever? Covenant or contract? Co contract says, I'll be faithful for now until you make me mad, until you get me angry, until I catch you doing something. Or do you say, I'll be faithful forever? Okay, contract, the next one says, I am suspicious. Or do you say, I am trusting? Are you always being suspicious or are you being trusting? Contract says, I'm suspicious of you. Or does covenant, if you go to covenant, say, I'm trusting? This is going to help us today. Okay, our next one is, do I have to? Do I have to do it? Or does covenant say, I want to do it? 
That's all right. Y'all want to do it. Or do you say, do I have to? Contract to come. The next one is, you say, well, okay, it's a deal. I'll do it as a deal. I'll do it for you because it is. Well, I'll do it for you, okay, based on this. It's a deal. Does it, does it have to be something, a deal made just for you to do something for your spouse? Or, or do you say, I'll do it because it's a relationship? Or is it always a deal? Or do you always have to make a deal? If you do tit for tat, or you make a deal this day and I'll make a deal the next and we'll work it out. Or do you do it because you're in a relationship? Contract says it's a deal. Covenant says it's a relationship. The last one says, I can't forgive. Covenant says, I have forgiven. Okay? Now you go down and check how many you got on the contract and how many you got on the covenant. And if you got more on the co uh, contract, then you got to do some work. Okay? You got to do some work. Okay? And if you got more on the covenant, then I guess you're good to go. Okay? Now, it's all right to be short to your spouse. We both are the same. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, you know, and that's good because now you see where you need to work at. Okay? So, if you have more, and, it's, and, that's, and that's all right, if you have more on the contract, that lets you know I need to work on these things. And if you have more under covenant, if you have less under covenant than those things that you have, you want to see under covenant, you have on the contract, you know, you had, had better do it. And how you communicate, how you answer these questions, determine how you view your marriage. How you answer these questions determine how you view your marriage. Okay? I see y'all discussing them some. Yeah. I'm going to let y'all discuss them a little bit. Now that'll be up to y'all to share if y'all want to share or not. Uh, we ain't going to put nobody on the spot. But I mean, but this is what we're doing to help. I'm going to wait for the doors to get completed. Um, I think this is a good little, little quiz. And for those out there watching this by, by Ustream, hopefully you, you were able to hear all the questions that were asked. And if you're married and you're listening at this, you, you can take this little quiz and you can see the outcome of how, how you actually came out. Do you have more on the contract? You know, or do you have more on the covenant? And if you have more on the contract, then that's where you need to say, okay, this is how we're going to create an unbreakable bond. We need to get more under the covenant side. So we need to do some more praying. We need to do some more asking God on some things, and God for God to help us. This is what we, this is what this creates: the helping married couples to understand the value of a covenant. Okay, and when you're honest with yourself, you, you can you, you're honest with God, and God can help. Okay, now does anybody want to share? Uh, I mean, their, their what they came out with and what they think they can do better in, or you know how you want to you know. I'm not going to put anybody in that's only if you want to share. Okay, Bob. Um, um, I got seven on a contract and four on a covenant. Okay. Uh, and that's all right. That's all right. Uh, I mean, I don't remember the questions all the time. I gotta yeah, I understand. I can read them back off for you, but. Okay. Okay. Uh, under contract, it was you had better do it. And under covenant, how may I serve you? Say you better do it, but I don't say how may I serve you. Yes. So, um, I say that was one so let's so let me ask a question. Do you think how may I serve you is 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 degrading, or do you think it's gonna, uh, you know, is it pride? Because I, I think that's something that we should practice. You know, how, honey, how may I serve you? You know, imagine if we if we said that to our spouse. I think you would get a better answer. Oh, oh yeah, I, I do think so. Uh, I don't know. I just. 
Please the other, exactly. So, and then the next one was what do I get or what can I get? So do we have the mindset of saying what can I get, what do I get from it? Or do you have the mindset of saying what can I get? That was also contrary. Okay. Um, I'd say, uh, I'd say, I'd just, I'd say that a lot. Uh, do a lot of mo uh, we call them ultimatums. Yeah. Um, because uh, if I'm tired, and she's tired. As a matter of fact, it happened to me yesterday. She asked me, uh, I guess, put lotion on her back. Cause she was really, you know, back on me. And I was so tired, and I was just like, uh, okay. And I ain't gonna lie, I kind of rushed through it. So I just kind of went, lay back down. She's like, you didn't even get a talk for her. I'm like, really? I gotta, you know. And, and you were not thinking on how you could serve her. Yeah, serve you were thinking more so, I, I'm tired. Yeah, I'm tired. Yeah. What am I getting from this? I, I'm tired. You getting the back rub, I'm getting nothing. I'm staying up late, you know, get, not getting yeah. sleep by me. So, you know, and we tend to think, in, and this is, I mean, we're married, so we, we're learning about this. And we tend to think that way because we're not receiving anything. But we're giving, what we don't understand is better to give than it is to receive. And so, I, that, that, amen. That's what I'm saying. So the things, and the next one was what will it take or whatever it takes. You know, do we do we often say what will it take to get you happy, or do you say whatever it takes? Uh, that one also is a contract. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would say that that was the contract. Um, I guess with that, it's just sometimes you know, uh, I just don't want to hear it. So it's not more of a say whatever just to make her happy. When well, you say what will it take, you don't ask what will it, you, you think more, God, what is it going to take for this woman to share? Yeah, but, you know, quiet. instead so of saying whatever it takes, I'll do it. Take, yeah, so it's more like she asked me to do it, she's like, we don't want to. I don't want to hear her mouth. Yeah, so exactly. I'm going to just go do it just because I want to hear her mouth instead of, I just want to do it just to please her. Yeah. So, uh, I could definitely sure. say I'm going to have to contract. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so now I'm, I'm going to go to you answer. that's good, you answered three of them. I'm going to go over here to the Christians. Did y'all want to answer? Or? Okay, we'll go ahead. We'll do three on you guys. Um, now, we'll do the first one. You know, had you better had, had you better do it, or how may I serve you? We were both covering on that one. Okay, how may I serve you? Okay, okay y'all go. Are you okay. Ready? okay. The second one was what do I get, or what can I get? We were both covering on that one. What can I get? Okay. The third one was, what will it take or whatever it takes? Now, I was contract on that one. Okay. I was contract on that one because, like, uh, throughout our marriage, one of the things, we, we're we're so totally different. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm the one that's always, you know, trying to find some kind of way to, to, to show my love and blah, 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 blah. blah. But... She's more of a, didn't you realize that I did this here because I love you? And it's like, no, I, I just, so, so for me, it's more like, you know, what will it take to make you happy? Yeah. But for her, it's, it's kind of different. So I know, and that's something that we've been working working on through our marriage. Yeah. I mean it's gotten better exactly. over the years, but yes, I I was I was kind of Okay, then the next one is it's not my responsibility or I'm happy to do it. We were both coming in on that one. Okay, I'm happy to do it. The next one it's not my fault or I accept responsibility. We were both coming in on that one. Okay. The next one is I'll meet you halfway or I'll give you a hundred percent. We were both contract on that one. <laughs> I'll meet you half. Okay. <laughs> we were both contract on that one. So. Okay. So 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 you see where you where you guys. So how many did you get out of the um, kind of contracting company? Three. I had three and she had three. I had two. Two. On contract. I put no deal on the contract. Okay. So I have two. And then the other one is what? And you had how many? I had three. 
Okay. And we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we had eleven of them. Y'all got two. We got eight. She she you had got nine eight. and two. And I had eight and three. Okay. So how you answer these questions determines how you view your marriage. How much effort you are putting into your marriage and how you see your spouse. Okay. So when you think about those areas that you are you need to work on. In your marriage, then that's something, you know, go to God about. And it's nothing wrong with that. It is, it is something wrong if you continue in it and not want to change it. Okay? Brother Christian. I have a question uh, about one of those because I check, I check both of them. The one with the suspicious and the, and the trusting. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in, in my flesh, I am suspicious, mm -hmm. but every single time, the Holy Ghost in me is like, what is wrong with you? Like, get it together. So, mm -hmm. so I checked the contract. Well, I checked the suspicions because because I didn't want to. I didn't want to lie to myself about it because. Well, it would be, but that so that's something that is a contract, right? So, so you do have to. I mean, because if that's what you're thinking at that moment or that time, then mm -hmm. that's something that you 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 have to continue to work out. Right. So yeah. Yeah, but my Holy Ghost when. 99.9, 100% of the time. Amen. But. Amen. And see, and, and, and that's because he continues to work on you in that process. So whatever he's working on you in, okay, that that's what he's going to, you're going to hear that little small voice because you know mm -hmm. I'm supposed to trust you, but that suspicion is trying to be there. But which is good. So you know those areas. So you know the areas. That's just a little quiz to kind of give you a, a word. We're gauge where you're gauging at and some things you need to work on in in your marriage. Don't do it. What was the what was the other questions? Uh, I love, I'll let Papa read. Okay, it's uh uh what will it take or whatever it takes. We left off there. And then it was it's not my responsibility or I'm happy to do it. Um, yeah, I got covenant for that one. Okay. Then the next one was it's not my fault or I accept responsibility. I got contract for that one. Okay. Then the next one was, I'll meet you halfway or I'll give you 100%. I got a contract also for that one. Okay. And then the other one was, I'll be faithful for now or I'll be faithful forever. I got covenant for that one. Okay. Then the other one was, I am suspicious and I am trusting. I got covenant for that one as well. Okay. Um, and the last three was, I have to or I want to. Okay, and then the next one was, it's a deal, and the other one was, it's a relationship. I got a contract. Okay, so y'all make a deal. You did say that. Yeah, so yes, I, sir. I got four covenant, seven contracts. Okay, okay, well, those are some areas you know you need to, you guys need to improve on. So so when you think about that, I'm going to get, turn it over to my husband after I read this. So if your marriage is a contract, all you see is your spouse's failures, inabilities, and flaws. Okay. So if it's a contract, that's all you see is your failures, inabilities, and flaws. But when you're in a contract, everything, and not only not only that, but when you're in a contract, everything they do irritates you and can become a huge and can become very huge and turn into a huge blow up. You always assume the worst instead of the best in your spouse. That's a contract. So if your marriage is a covenant, you see your spouse not as he or she is, but as he or she can become. Assume the best, overlook character flaws and imperfections. That's a covenant. So when we're able to do that, and we're able to overlook the character flaws, and we're able to overlook the imperfections and the inabilities, then we know we are walking in a covenant. Because God don't look at our inability. He doesn't look at our imperfections. He doesn't look at our flaws. He sees what we can become. And so we do that, you know, um, then we know we're walking in true covenant. Okay? So that's a constant thing we, we have to continue to work on as God. We're trying to build the, um, create an unbreakable bond in our marriage to where we're not worried. It's, we're, we're devil proofing. We're self being, we're, we're, we're proofing ourselves against ourselves. Okay? Because <laughs> a lot of times our whole problem is ourselves. And so, so when we are walking in a covenant, then God is able to be in there with us. Okay? He 
He's the one in the middle keeping it together, talking to us, saying, uh uh uh, don't think that thought. Mm -mm -mm, don't do that. Go back and get that right. Go back and say this. Go back and, and you know, and repent quickly. You know, how long does it take you to repent? How long does it ask you? Does it take for you to ask them to forgive you? How long, you know, those type of things, you know. Do you go back and explain yourself to your spouse and tell your spouse, you know, this is why I did this, this is why I said this. Do you, you know, and I have some other stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and turn over to my husband that I want to, uh, we'll kind of go in on next week um, and finish this a little bit out and then go into something else, but um, amen. So hopefully you enjoyed this, this particular part of it. Um, of the unbreakable bond, how we can create, and the differences we need to understand between a contract marriage and a covenant marriage. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. Amen. I thank Amen. God for that lesson, Apostle Tasha. Amen. On the unbreakable bond. Uh, it's either contract or it's covenant. It's either or. Amen. And if it's contract, God's given us some time to get it right. Amen. Uh, I will say that every marriage doesn't start off as covenant. Marriage is what you put into it. You've got to work on that marriage to keep it covenant. You can be covenant today and contract tomorrow. But they, it just depends on how everything's going. Okay, so it's so important that uh, that uh, you work that you work on your on your marriage. Well, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't have time tonight to teach four pages, but uh, I will definitely teach my portion. On next Wednesday, uh, it's also going to have the same sub subtitle, uh, Praise God, Creating the Unbreakable Bond. And I have a couple of skits that we're going to do also with mine. Amen. But uh, uh, I do have a question. Um, I need a volunteer to, uh, to explain uh, to the church body on what were some things that they seen the parents do right uh, when it comes to conflict resolution in the home. As you were growing up, and your parents had disagreements and arguments. How did they handle those arguments and disagreements? And then now, since you're married, uh, how do you see how, how they did it? Are you doing it the same way? Or are you doing it different way? How you seen your parents do it when you were growing up? How they handled their problems? And then now since you're married, how are you handling you know, problems and conflicts and disagreements in marriage? So uh, I know we have a, you know, a few minutes to, to uh, answer a few questions on that. So can I get a volunteer to stand and just, uh, you know, how did you see your parents handle conflicts, handle disagreements? arguments, how did they make up, did they make up, uh, you know, and now since you're married, uh, what are you doing different, or are you doing the same thing that they were doing, amen, so can I get a volunteer on that, amen, we got one volunteer, can I get one more volunteer, amen, Sister Christian, amen, praise God, so we got Brother Doyle, we got three volunteers, uh, how about each of y'all get about, uh, Let's say three minutes, three to four minutes, amen? So we'll go with Brother Darnell first as he raises his hand first, amen. amen? Amen. Well, with my parents, all I saw was arguing, fussing, fighting, hitting, pushing, alcohol, weed, and all of that. So uh, what I tried to do, I tried not to, try not to be like them. I didn't try to be myself. I didn't try to be. So now, in our marriage now, sometimes it's hard, but it's something that we've worked on over the years. I try not to yell. I, I was upset today, but I didn't yell. So uh, now we try not to yell. We, we actually talk about the problem. And the other thing that we don't do is we do not argue in front of the children. And there's no type of physical nothing. We don't even play fight because of how we came up. So that's what we do. We, we, we number one, we pray and we try to stay in God. Because if, cause if it weren't for God, we would have never got off the ground anyway. So 
Number two, we don't scream and holler and fuss. We, we talk about it. Number three, we don't argue in front of the kids. And number four, uh, there's no type of physical nothing. So that's what we do. Amen. 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 Praise God. Sister Christian. Well, um, grew up something similar to my husband. Um, foul language, uh, very abusive. It would get to the point that sometimes where we as the children would jump in and with batons and skillets and throwing shoes. Yes. So, but we don't do that. I, that's not done in my home. Um, when I think we're going to argue, well, I, I'll be quiet and I'll start praying. Well, Lord, before this even escalates, you, you, I need you now. I need you now. Um, we pray, we we'll talk it over. Um, we give each other the opportunity to explain so that we know what we think we're hearing. Because he can say one thing and I'll hear another. So we give each other that opportunity to say so that we both understand. And ten times out of ten, we're saying the exact same way. One speaking French, one speaking Spanish. It's the same thing. And so, but you have to have patience. Can't be quick to fly off the hand. And that's what we grew up with. Just and the I'm always right. No, we're not always right. So and we have to be willing to say, okay, I was wrong. I didn't grow up with that. You're the, always the one that's wrong, I'm always the one that's right, and that's it. Here's a sheet. <laughs> right. So. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. All right, we got Brother Doyle. Amen. All right. Um I mean, as far as good, I did see, well, my parents, they did, they prayed together. The one thing that they did do, they, you know, they, they prayed together. They may not have been praying to the true God, but, you know, they, they did come together and they did pray. So, um, I can say that, you know, that was good. As far as on the bad, um, it was really no discipline. Um, I didn't really, it was more like a uh, friend instead of, uh, you know, uh, a parent. It was no more, you know, it wasn't, you know, keep up come in at this certain time, it was just kind of like, you go where you please. So, uh, you know, it was just kind of no family time. It was just kind of whatever happened, you know, you on your own type of thing. But, uh, basically, no no discipline. So, uh, and then um, I did, I see a lot of argument, yelling, um, foul language. My, my grandparents, they actually raised me. Um, they, they was married for 50, like 55 years. And, you know, they, you know, they argued every single day of the 55 years, as probably the mother say. But they, they held it together. They actually just separated about a month ago, uh, after 55 years. And then my grandfather, he actually has a, a, a child on the way. And he was like 79. So, uh, well. So how do you resolve that? How do y'all resolve? How do I resolve? Um, I think um, I did. I, I did take uh, a lot of, um, you know, as far as discipline. You know, we we discipline different because she, you know, I, you know, as I'm, I mean, I believe in you know you need to beat them, but you know, if it comes it comes to it, but that's not like my first thing to do. Her first thing, you know, she'll tell you once. If you don't get it, then you gonna get beat. For me, it's more like you know, um, I'm gonna talk to you. Try to you know hey, communicate with them and then you know, keep communicating. And then you know I'm gonna beat you. Uh, she, she you know she she she's used to a uh, you know a family oriented type of environment. I wasn't used to that, so it's like you know she wants to spend family time. I'm like family time, I'm like you know what is that? You know we, we you know we're watching TV together. That's family time. That was that's just me. Her is more like you know let's play games and I'm like man games. You know, I'll do that. So it's no, it's uh, you know, I, I take a lot of um, what I've seen my family do. So, and you know, a lot of times we kind of bump heads on that area because it's just like she was raised, she was raised a totally different way than what I was raised. Um, I say I think the good. Um, I mean, eventually we, as far as discipline, we come together on a discipline. You know, um, we may not agree the first time, but then I would say, okay, you know, 
that makes sense. You know, so we'll come to together, come to an agreement. And um, now we, we started implementing a lot of more praying um, because uh, I, can, I can say we used to, uh, you know, through bump heads, we, we used to pray separate. You know, I'm gonna go pray. You go pray. You know, because it was it was to the point where I couldn't pray with her because it was just like my prayers wasn't. This wasn't prayers. I don't know. I, I'll just pray for her instead of praying for myself. Yeah. So I'll catch myself being like, Lord, bless her, her attitude, her mouth, you know, her, 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 her. And I never, you know, one time I caught myself, like, man, I didn't even mention myself. You know, because you don't see yourself. You don't see your, your own issues. It's more of a, I see your issues. You know, all I see is your issues. You know, I don't see my own issues. Like, what? I ain't do that. I don't have no issues. You, know, you just kind of look at the other person, point fingers at them, and not point point at yourself. So you know, lately what I was doing, I was like, okay, well, Lord, you know, help me. You know what? You know what is she seeing that I don't see? Because I don't. You know, a lot of times when she get upset, I'm like, I don't know what I did. And she'll be like, you don't know. You know, you know what you did. And I'm just like, she'll think I know, but I really don't. I'm like, you know, I don't want to ask her what I did because if you ask what you did, and then just like. You should know. So how do so how do you guys resolve? So how, how do you guys resolve that conflict? You um, know, how do you resolve that? I mean, we mm -hmm. used to just you know you go pray and I'm gonna pray. Mm -hmm. You know she'll go pray and I'll go pray and we'll come back together and then we'll just be like you know hey uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it. You know it may take we don't we don't talk it, it normally take weeks. You know you go you go pray I'm gonna go pray and I won't talk to her maybe. Three days, it should need about a week. And then we come back together, then we talk about it. Uh, but now it's just like, okay, let's just pray together. You know, uh, Lord, what is our need? Uh, what is our situation? What is, what is our problem? Instead of, you know, what's my problem? What's her problem? You know, now we start putting together, like, it's, it's not, I mean, because it's not just your problem. If you're right. one, it's our problem. It's our problem. You right. know, if I'm, if I'm jacked up, you're jacked up. If you're jacked up, I'm jacked up. So it's just like, you know, hey, you know, Lord, you know, I'm not, I can't continue to say, you know, she's doing this, right. she's doing that. You know, I'm, you know, it's what are we doing? But, I, you know, it just it took me a while to you know, uh, do that. Like I said, um, I always see my, uh, I always see my, my parents, I always see them pray. They'll pray together, they'll argue, they'll, they'll, they'll pray together. But they, after, soon after they pray, they back in each other's throat. Yeah. So, so in other words, you know, so your conflict resolution, how you solve, you talk it out, pray it out, walk it out, laugh it out. What we recently started doing, mm -hmm. <laughs> when we see a problem coming up, um, like this morning, he said I drew like a dog. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I don't want to talk to her right now. What she said really made me upset. So we'll, you know, state the problem. We just recently did a Bible study where... Um, it's not the person that made you mad, it's what they did that made you mad. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about, you know, what, what what you just did in that situation made me upset. And I need to continue my second to calm down. And then we'll talk about it. It's like, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to say it that way, or I didn't mean to do it this way. This is what I meant. I'm sorry about your feelings. Can we move on for it? Okay, yeah, sure. I was a little upset, but I forgive you. It's okay. Yeah. I can't go back to what she, she said uh, how you interpret things. Like I didn't, I wasn't trying to say it like as a dog. I was just like, I draw my dog and drools a lot. You know, why? You know, I, I didn't mean it as in, I guess, I said it the wrong way. Sometimes you, you, know, you say stuff that you don't mean to say it like that, but it just come out like that. So, uh, but I mean, but lately, it's, since we've been, we started Bible study, uh, we started doing them every night. Uh, first, we were doing it on anger. Maybe three hours a night. Um, then we started doing. Um, we just started uh, yesterday, or day before. We started on uh, marriage uh, about marriage, and it's and it's very. I mean, it's really been helping us out a lot because uh, I mean, I could say this is like probably the most peace I had since we've been married. You know, even from the, the first day, you know, I feel like it was peace, but now I just feel like it's. I mean, it's a whole lot. I don't feel like I have to jump down my throat for nothing. It's just like wake up and it's like, okay, it's a good day. So. Amen. And you know, and I think I, you know, I hear a lot of everybody 
what they um, said about you know what family they grew up you know a lot of conflict in the home a lot of arguing a lot of physical hitting things of that nature and so a lot of times you find yourself doing that thing that you grew up with you know and and things of that nature but in one of the one of the in my, I'm glad my husband brought this up because I'm still go ahead and kind of one of the things that helps in a breakable bond in a marriage is to live your faith together. It is to live your faith together. In other words, pray together, read your word together, study your word together, um, you know, um, worship together, you know, not live separate lives and just because you disagree on something, you know, learn how to come back and explain to your spouse, you know, this is why I was upset, this is why I done this, and never, never let the sun go down in your wrath, don't go, you know, just because you keep, your children may not see you arguing, if you're holding a grudge in your heart, they still can feel that. One thing we try to do, even if we have our disagreements, we, we don't go to being mad. We'll work it out, talk it out, and if we can't get it resolved, then we'll stay up until we get it resolved. <laughs> and so, and so, because you want to be able to have peace in your home. You want to be able to have, so the things that I grew up with, I said I would never want my children to see or, or, or experience with violence and all that kind of stuff, or, you know, be able to, for my kids. And if you do disagree, and your kids see you disagree, go back and apologize for that, okay? And, uh, you know, so that was one thing, you know, growing up I never saw was that my people you know they never apologized for what they you know they did or the first part in front of the kids or they did do something. So you know you want to have a conflict resolution in your home where your kids are able to see you you, have, you may disagree but you know how to be one again. Okay, and not walk around holding grudges and being upset but you're still laughing, you're still hugging, you're still, you know, being that the parent and the husband and the wife that you should be to be an example. You know, and so in living your faith together is one of those things. Study the word, read the word, pray the word, do that together. Be able to discuss the scriptures, be able to talk about the scriptures. Let your children hear that, let your family see that. You know, things that your parents do, you, 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 you allow your children to see you as that example, you know, um, in your home. You have conflict resolution. You know every marriage is going to disagree, but when you disagree, learn how to learn how to disagree and come back from that. So, um, there was a, a couple months ago, uh, we we got into it about something. I forgot. We got into it. And, uh, we talked to her, and uh, it was so funny because we was both sitting in the same room, you know, living room, and uh, Jeremiah was watching uh, a Veggie Tales thing. Basically talking about don't go to uh, go to bed mad. And he, I mean, he was talking about it, and we were sitting in the same room. And I'm just looking at him the whole time. I'm mad, but he was like, basically, what happened on uh, Bob Tomato? They weren't trying to go to sleep. So they had bag all of that. Like, I'm so tired, but I can't go to sleep. You know, you go to sleep. No, I'm not going to sleep. But he's sitting there like trying to figure out what's going to happen. I'm sitting there. And I'm, I'm so tired, and I and I started thinking like. Hey, how this, you know, how this, this little cartoon convicted me, <laughs> and I just was like, okay, listen, I'm sorry, you know, it made, it made me, it made me go apologize, and I just thought, I thought that was so, you know, I thought it was so funny because, like, man, looking at him, you know, Jeremiah looking at it, you know, she looking at it, and I'm just like, man, it's a little cartoon, but maybe, you know, I apologize, so, you know, I thought it was funny, so, amen, so, right. amen, so. So that's good. So praise God. So you know how you know the areas that you need to work on in your marriage. You know the um, how to create that unbreakable bond to where you got to create that in your home, um, in your marriage, in your family. You want to be able to see. Now, Felicia, you had your hand up. You didn't want to say anything. Okay. Um, and so you know, and, and that's the greatest thing because you got little eyes watching. So you have little eyes that are watching you, so you want to be able to show them the, 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 what, what right looks like. Amen. All right. Well.
much. It's about that time we're going to dismiss. Amen. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for this lesson on tonight on creating the unbreakable bond, God, growing your marriage God's way. Lord, I pray, God, that all those who were in attendance tonight and those that have viewed this on Ustream or one of the social media sites, God, Lord, we ask, God, Lord, that you'll build that marriage, God, that you'll make it unbreakable, God. Lord, that you keep every attack of the enemy out, God. Lord, let us be nurtured with your spirit and your love, God. And, Lord, we thank you once again for this marriage because the marriage, God, is your relationship with the church, God. And we thank you right now. In your name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed in the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. Hug somebody's neck. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.